Good afternoon, folks. Here we are at the Tri-County Federal Tri-County Area Federal Credit Union Gymnasium at Pops Grove High School for the. This is the Constellation Semifinals. Time to, for these teams to punch their ticket. The states winner of this match will get into the Constellation Final with a chance to finish third or fourth, uh, but ultimately getting uh, that trip to uh, the state duels tournament. We have Methacton and the. Four seed and Own J Roberts, or I'm sorry, Methacton three seed, Own J Roberts the three seed. Maybe I'll get it right this time. Own J Roberts the four seed. <laughs> Come on, Chuck, you gotta correct me. Here, as always, with Mike behind the scenes, and again, join us, uh, Chuck Nestle. For Own J Roberts, here we have Aiden Wren. Yep, Aiden Wren Jr. has not wrestled a match yet this year, and then we have. Uh, Jorge Carmona for the Methacton Warriors. Carmona has one and nine record coming in. Young sophomore. Wren's a wrestler for Owen Jay that fills in the lineup when they bounce guys around. Wren on a shot. Head down. Carmona's going to make him pay for it here. Good job in that front headlock. Spin behind. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. And there he gets a two. Our officials here are Greg Fantazzi, and, uh, the assistant official for this match right now, and the lead official in this bout is Mark Marino. This Good is job. Owen J. Methacton Part Do. Yeah, two times one week, Chuck. Yeah. Good changeover by Wren, sealing off again to his feet, but they ran out of space. Here in the restart, minute 21 left in the period. Ren back to his feet. Carmona doing a good job to mat return. And there is a locking hands on Carmona. Say it time and time again. Movement on bottom creates a lot of problems for the guy on top. Oh, and Jay put Ren out here against Carmona. Probably going to see the Resnick-McNair matchup next. At 126. I'll tell you what, that's going to be a good one, Chuck. Uh, you know, McNair, you know, we got to watch him wrestle Ben Radner last time from Rock South watching that match after we were done. Nice low single shot by Aiden Wren. Let's see if he can score from here. And he's able to finish. Wasn't the prettiest finish, but got points nonetheless. Cats will take it. 4 2 lead here for Wren. Uh, looks like there's some technical difficulties on the scoreboard up on the wall. 33 seconds go here in the period. Aiden Wren on top and in control 4-2. Okay, these two teams very familiar with each other. Uh, we'll see how the coaches bounce the lineups around to try and get an advantage. The Cats got the best of Methacton in this past week, 31-26. to Let's see if Methacton can make some changes and come out on top. A lot of close matches last time. It could have went either way. Methacton could have uh, very easily won the match the last time that they wrestled each other. Three seconds to go here. Rendon getting tough on top with the lead. here in the second period. Ren goes down, seems to escape again and get back to his offense. Must be cold outside. There's men wearing scarves here. Huge match right off the bat here. Yeah. You know, this will set the tone. It's going to be tight. Every match is going to be important here today. Good res at Tech Ball Carmona on Wednesday night. And ultimately, I think this was the match that the Wildcats wanted but didn't get. Carmona with the shot doesn't commit to it. Ren thought about launching him, but you know, maybe didn't thought better of it. Nice double attempt by Ren. Switch off the single. 
Carmona's doing a good job countering. And he's gonna... Oh, nice job by Ren. Not giving up any points. Nice little cut away there. Yeah. Ren trying to throw Carmona. Not working out for him. Now he's in trouble. Belly down. He's gonna give two and two here, though. And make it 6-5. In favor of Carmona. Carmona on the side with a half. Ren up to his feet. Carmona drags him back down. And you got two kids fighting for their team here. Not a lot of varsity experience. Ren got a little sloppy there. One point advantage for Carmona. Ren back to his feet, but is run out of bounds by. Quickly. Yes. Thirty seconds. Let's see if Ren can get the escape. He's gonna cut hands again. That's locking hands on top there. Neither official in, in position to make that call, however. Carmona's seen action. The starter at 126, William Rebert, has been out with injury. And uh, as a result, Carmona's seen, seen a bulk of his action, as Chuck said, 1-9 in the season. With the escape, Aiden Wren is tied to match at 6 with about 8 seconds to go here in the period. Carmona tries to throw Wren, and they run out of time. Ill advised move. Carmona with the choice goes down here for the set third period. Aiden Wren's got that wrist. See if you can turn him. Yeah, he's looking to load up. Load up, he's got the two on one. And a bar punched in on the far side. See if he gets out that side and runs it some. Marino, real quick, great call. Get the stall. Carmona has not tried to come up off his off his base. Only now after the stall call has he tried. Got the Red, wrist. Back to two on one. See if he goes hazard till here. Uh, Come to his feet. Ren doing a nice job. Um, that return and getting hits back over top. Come back up again. Ren's at the half end. He goes other side with it. Switches over quick. Marino all over the fact that people were calling for a full Nelson. Thirty seconds to go here. Ren on low single. He's got a circle that way. Got to take down two. Got to hold on for 20 seconds here. With 8-7 lead with 15 to go now. Can't get sloppy. 10 seconds. Five seconds to go. And Ren is going to ride him out for the 8-7 win at 120 pounds. Give the Wildcats a 3-0 lead. As Luke Resnick strolls over to the table, come out 126. We'll see what the uh, Wildcats uh, looks like. It's going to be McNair. Here we go. Cats and very happy with that win from Ren. That match easily could have went either way. Yep. And it's going to come down. It's going to be real close. You know, a kid like Aiden Ren doesn't get to wrestle a lot. You know, chance for him to step up and get some points for his team. Really nice job Dave by Ren. Ren. Yeah. <laughs> Time. 
same time. Clock's not ready. All right, here's one of those night rows, new guard, old guard matchups here we talked about. Resnick then around. Last time, last week, Resnick tech fold Carmona and uh, McNair made the decision on um, McCutcheon when they wrestled the last time. Uh, Lukey Resnick's a senior. He's got a 27-5 and five record this year. Luke to right to his patented dump, and he's getting some back. He's getting some swipes. Oh, no. He's McNair, got Keyway in trouble. The young freshman. He's got him in trouble now. Uh, Resnick is not pulling around today. This is going to be huge for the Wildcats if he can pin him. But there's a lot of fight in McNair. He didn't beat a Ben Radner last night without being a top. Resnick has got that locked up tight. And there's a minute 15 left in the period. Man, that's close. McNair fighting yep. the freshman. Resnick doing a great job of staying just in control here and on top of him. Not giving McNair any ability to get out. Uh-oh. Oh. Wow. Hats off to McNair getting off his back. Excellent job by the young buck there. 23-2 and two record this year so far. Shows he's got some fight in him. <laughs> fight, heart, a lot of stuff. Both of these guys have wrestled 113, 120, 126 range this year. to go. Five nothing lead here for Luke Resnick. I, I'm going to go on and say that no lead is safe against Keyway McNair. I'm not going to say that Luke Resnick's going to go on to major him at this point in the match because I saw McNair come back on Radner last night, but Luke's getting some more swipes. You can see it I there. Say that. You can see McNair, how athletic he is. He's tough, very flexible, strong. He can, sc he can score a lot of points quick, too. Exactly. Lead official for this bout is Greg Fantasi, and Mark Marino is assisting. It's nice to see the A, a crew out here this weekend at Potts Grove of, of officials. McNair's two losses came by way of a kid named Nick Gerard from Robinson, Virginia. He lost 6-3, to three and he lost the Wild from Bordertown earlier this year, 5-1. to one. And that Wild bumped up to 120 for that match. Luke... Uh, Luke's getting hazard tilt. He reloads it again. It was Luke's choice on for the between periods. He deferred to Keyway. Keyway shows down. We're a minute 35 left here in the second period. And Resnick is in control. Luke Resnick has a lifetime 84 and 33 record for the Cats. Yeah, considering he only wrestled eight matches as a freshman. Uh, it'd be nice to see that he get a uh, reach a hundred win plateau, and Keyway earns an escape, and he's right on the attack, right in on a shot on Resnick, but Resnick's able to afford it with a minute eight left. Keyway knows he's going to have to get on his offense now, make up some ground before this period's over. No the shot attempt. The only losses for Resnick this year come against state qualifiers, state medalists. Yep, he's got Resnick five on, the dump, on the dump, he switched off to a single, hits the dump again, he's got Keyway in trouble, he's at that low arm trap, and there is a 9-1 lead just like that. Man, he's good at that, isn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Luke's controlled the entire match here. Very good to see. McNair's fighting. He's got his hands full, though, with this crafty veteran. Resnick. 15 to go here in the period. Resnick trying to get... He's got him getting swipes again. Luke's got to be careful here. He's going to hold him for the end of the period. Three more, make it 12 1. Oh, 
Resnick goes neutral. And there he is on a high single. Now he's dropped down though. He's at the ankle. Keyway Wizard and trying to dig that Wizard in. Let's see if Luke sl slips this Wizard. There he is he's looking, picking up on that toe. He's got to table it. Great call. Fantasy calls the stalemate. Look for a little dump here to his back. See if he can mend a match. Yep. He's in that, he loves being in that position, a head-low position in tie-ups. He's extremely comfortable there. It's really nice there's no stomping in the feet today here in the gym. Shaking our cameras. <laughs> How about that, Chuck? minute to go here in the third period. Mickey Resnick with a 12-1 lead. Ref breaks him up, going to start him over again. to go, or I'm sorry, 38 to go. Oh, nice job by Resnick there. Turn hands, getting to the legs. And they're going to call a stalemate here pretty soon. Good boy fighting. Yep, Resnick trying to come up. There he goes. He got the second one. Makes it 14-1. Turn them quick. Keep away having Eight other plans. Go. Uh oh. Wow. I don't think. Chuck, did you see that coming? Did you see that 14 1 result coming? Uh, I think Luke had the advantage. I didn't think he'd beat him by that much. Uh, Kid, uh, Kid Boy's got fight in him. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure he'll reflect a little bit, and uh, hopefully he doesn't doesn't get down on himself. Uh, he's going to have a promising postseason here. Here we are with the Petroselli Ballack rematch from their night, which Petroselli won by fall. Not, seven nothing the lead here for OJ Petroselli on a high single. He's right to the head. He's gonna. Hey, he's got a little center there down in his belly. He still is Balak. Petrosley, sometimes his aggression is almost a, a hindrance. You know, he's real aggressive there. He's trying to make something happen. And, uh, you know, it's, just stick to, the, stick to what makes him good. Like there, that nice little dump. Hey, it's hard to teach that. You know, you can always pull the kid back eventually. He'll, he'll learn what he can get away with. You know, it's good to see a young kid being aggressive like that. Things didn't go the way he wanted yesterday, I don't think, but hopefully he can bounce back today and get some points for his team. Uh, Ballack is a sophomore from the Thacton, 10 and 13 record this year so far. Again, for both of these teams, the Cats and the Thacton, from 106 to 145, each team only has one senior in here. The rest are all freshmen and sophomores. You know, so both of these squads have promising futures. One twenty-nine to go here. Here we are, the blood time. Petroselli leading 
two nothing. Wildcats up seven nothing. Petrelli comes over top, tries to hit the cross face cradle, sits him back. Which is one leg to see if he goes back to that cradle. Yeah, he's got the cross face. He's got locked up. And he's got Ballock. He's getting some swipes. He's got to pull him back in right now. He's out right now. Yep. Great job. Great awareness by Petroselli. Fifty seconds to go here, a lot of time. Now Petra's gonna get it. Nah, uh, maybe not. That inside left shoulder is, is up. Is up. There, Petra, like, good readjustment in the cradle. Gives the Wildcats a 13-0 lead. Going 138, possible potential, another rematch. Here comes Henry for McFacton. Senior with 22 and 3 record this year. Gonna get a rematch of the other night. Cole Meredith coming out for the Cats. He's a sophomore with a 19 and 6 record. This is a lot of fireworks this match last week. One of the three losses that Henry has is to Meredith. And it's a little shrug attempt. Henry dips down to the leg. Again, not too many people get Meredith a chance the other night. Came in, wrestled real well, beat Henry 7-3. Let's see if Henry, the, the veteran that he is, can regroup. Yep. Come back, get a victory here for the Warriors. Good shot attempt by Henry. Good counter by Cole. Meredith. Little duck attempt there by Meredith. Zone Henry was not was having none of it though. 35 seconds go here in the first period. We hit down to 15 seconds, no score. Not too much action there. Respect for each other there in the first period. Meredith takes down, looking to get out. Score that first point. <laughs> Meredith needs a haircut, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know about that. He tells me the girls like it. <laughs> the curls. It's debatable. Roll attempt, but he's almost exposed, exposing his back. Henry's got the leg split. He's got him up in the air. They're doing a wheel, little wheelbarrow race right now. Stalling on green. Good call by Fantasi. Wasn't trying to improve his position, and he cuts him anyway. Meredith puts you, makes you put yourself in bad position because he's unorthodox. Nice arm drag right to the single. He's trying to spin behind, but didn't get it. They don't like to mess around. He, likes to, he wants to wrestle. He wants to do stuff. And nope. That's hard when a guy keeps coming at you like that. He's willing to take chances. Ooh. Henry's got to watch himself here. We're going to run out of space. It looks like under a minute to go in the period. See if Meredith can turn this into something. Oh. Unlucky there, just ran out of space. 
Henry wisely got out of bounds, though. I think Henry's a little more cautious today than he was on Wednesday. He knows what uh, what Meredith is capable of. Sure. Now Meredith called him a couple things. Henry now aware. Henry in a shot. <laughs> Meredith getting some hips in. Doing a good job getting that pressure in. We'll see how Meredith's able to do here. Going that, down that far ankle. And just getting real aggressive with the way he's using his hips there in the counter. Henry will hanging on. I don't know if Henry's Henry's dead. Now he's starting to come up a little bit. And Fantasi hits the, for the, the stalemate. And we'll get a restart here. Okay, it's nice to see the crowd here. Came back out for a second day. Both teams have uh, you know, well represented with their, by their fans. Less than a second to go. And one nothing lead here going into the third period. And Henry takes bottom. I thought of another analogy last night about the small mats. So we said it's like being on the Route 76, right? Stop and go traffic. Start, stop. I thought of another one. It's kind of like being in a golf cart with a really bad golfer. Where you drive 10 feet, up, oh, there's his ball. Yep. Duffs it, got to drive 10 feet, up, oh, there's his ball. Just that constant stop and start. You know, it's unfortunate. Hopefully we can get it figured out. Meredith in on a leg real deep, but he's also real high. He sinks the second leg in. You can see Henry, though, reaching in, trying to peel it out, not letting it in. Meredith really high. And I can see, I'm not sure he's going to be able to have an opportunity to turn before it gets potentially dangerous, or Henry comes out the back door, although he's got that leg hooked. He's got both legs in. We'll see. I think we're going to see a stalemate here before anything. Oh, Meredith gets re reaches in and sinks that half a little bit deeper and he busts him down onto his hip. <laughs> nice job by Graham there. Nice job by both of them. Yeah. yeah. Henry's got his hands full with this young Meredith again. Yep. Got 50 seconds to go. He's to his Henry's to his feet. Good mat return by Cole Meredith. Meredith makes you earn every point you get. He goes out and grinds. Now he's got double hooks. He's holding in the crab ride. We'll see if he, he chops, yeah, chops an arm. 27 to go. Henry back to his feet. Meredith got the leg, got it locked. Ooh. No change, no change. That was close. 19 seconds to go. On a larger mat, he would have had room to get out there. We have a little sense of urgency here out of Henry. Yep. Good uh, nice shot by Henry. No. Nothing yet. And Barrett's got to roll through. Meredith's got that leg. Meredith's got to get hips down. This is going to be close here. Fantasi might wait till the end of the period to call. This is now no change of control there. Good no call. For a while there, Henry had it. Henry had it. I mean, he had him dead to rights. Uh, there's a conference by the officials. I don't know if they can overturn this one. Wow. I'm not so sure there. Yeah, I don't know. I agree with the call by the officials. We got Fantasi one more here, had no change in, in position. Marino uh, as the second official, as is his job, give it a, an opinion. You know, he saw it differently. You know, that's uh, the humanity of it, right? There, Chuck. Yeah, they conferred. I mean, hey, got, got by the book. Refs here. Sure. Got overtime. 40 seconds now to go. Henry dug deep there at the end to get out. He did had a nice restart in that last uh, last go. It was very slick by Henry. Thirty seconds go here in the first first takedown wins overtime. Henry.
Henry, you know, protecting the edge. One thing these Mendakin guys do, they wrestle the edge very well. He's got a warning from earlier. Yep. Right? Go to the coin flip right now. Meredith wins a toss, chooses Alex to go down. Let's see if Henry can hold him. Meredith hasn't been underneath. I don't even know if. Yeah, Henry he escaped in a second. He did. What about last week? I don't remember Meredith really having to work out from, from bottom. Henry can't hang down anywhere, though, because he's already got the warning. He lets him go quick up early on. Guys, tied up here. We've got 12 to go here in the first of two mandatory overtimes. Tries to close. Drag him through. Then ran out of room. I think Meredith's going to be confident going in this next period. Yeah, he wrote him, he wrote for, him for almost minute, that minute whole... Minute 59 seconds. Yep. Henry's Two, quick. one. Yep. Let's see if Henry's got another move here right off the bat. Nice. Got wrist control. Start for both guys coming in here in the thing. Leg, Meredith getting legs in. Or a leg. Um, Henry gets it out. Here we are, 19 seconds to go. Meredith kind of pulling back in that crab ride. Let's see what Henry does with it. He sinks a leg in and gets him belly, belly down. Got he's two legs out in. Face. He's got one leg in. He's up there tied. He can get the stalling warrior. There's not a whole lot of time left. Five seconds to go. Nice job by Meredith throwing the legs in there. He's wanted it more. Another great match by these two. Yep. Meredith got the best of them again. Nice job by both young men there. Yep. So now we go into 145, and we'll see who the... Uh, Reddington uh, ready did weigh in at 45 today. He didn't weigh in at 45 yesterday, but with the pound allowance, he weighed in at 45. And they send out, looks like Ben Bullich. He didn't check in at the table. This is Ben Bullich, though, for the Wildcats. His name's Ben Bullich. 16 nothing here for the Wildcats. Reddington's going to... Bullich, I don't know, has got any varsity experience this year. Just a freshman. We've seen a little bit difference from where we started and the flip from last match. Uh, Owen Jay's got some of the matchups that they've wanted, where Mathacton got the matchups they wanted the other week, the last week. Owen Jay is electing to chase Roman Moser with Dan Mancini, and there is your fall at 46 seconds to make it 16 6, and Dan Mancini is already out. Nice job by Reddington getting six. Bullich had his hand full. Again, Reddington, state qualifier, bright future. Good luck to Reddington and Hershey yep. and in the postseason. Got a really good chance of meddling this year. Good luck to him the rest of the way. Here we go, Mancini Moser. Again, Owen Jay win the toss this week and having the ability to make the get create matchups that they want. This is one that uh, they probably wanted on Wednesday but weren't able to get because they didn't win the toss. Reddington beat Mancini the last time, 5-3, sudden victory. Moser lost to Ricky McCutcheon last week, 8-6, sudden victory. So again, the matchups are different. Coaches being able to shuffle, shuffle their lineups around a little bit. Pick Mancini the catch right so away, far. uses that, elevates that hook, tries to pick inside knee. Moser, nice reshot, and Mancini back the other side. He looks like he's going to spin to his left. Uh, Moser almost going into the splits. He's going into the splits to counter his shot. Doing a nice job. Mancini again height with that leg. And Moser pulls away. He's going to watch her that fleeing the mat. Again, the Cats have got the matchups, I believe, that they wanted so far today. Uh, Moser's a freshman. 
20 and 6 record. Moser, uh, Moser a nice head inside single. Great countering by Mancini, however. Moser will probably end up at 52 here for postseason with Reddington wrestling 145. Mancini the takedown on the reshot on the counter of Moser's shot. Mancini's also wrestled 145 and 152, sorry for his team. Mancini's a sophomore. He has a 24 and 8 record this year so far. Mancini's doing a good job getting pressure on him. He's looking to lock up the cradle there. He's got the far arm near Lake Bulldogs. Now he's out and he's running it. He's trying to run Moser's head, head to his knee. Had it there for a second, touched hands, but just couldn't hold it. Greg Fantasi with the stalling warning on Moser. And then sees tilting him over. Got the back arm trapped. Hook him to the other side. He's home two back right now with five seconds going to period. And then see just ride, literally rides out the period. Then sees choice to. Lex to go bottom down. <laughs> Mancini to his feet and escapes, making a 5 nothing advantage for himself. Right to a 2 on 1 shot attempt, countered by Moser. Spins behind but does not, is unable to return to the mat. No points, no points. Now Mancini busts him down using hips and is 7 nothing just like that. Mancini rolling wrist forward. He's got the far side claw going. He's going to go back to his claw tilt, back, back arm trap claw tilt that he hit for two earlier in the match. You see him digging deep there, right hand. Puts a leg in. Nice job. He's got three. There's four. He's only holding two. He got two, a four count and a two count. There's two more, nine nothing puts it in major decision criteria right now as we just hit the midpoint of the match. He goes back to it. Couldn't get his cradle going, but he's having success with this tilt. Uh, we didn't get to see Man City and Reddington wrestle again today, but I. I have a feeling we'll get to see them wrestle in a couple weeks, right? Yep. Potentially pack tens. Uh, great job there. Back forearm trapped. He tries to get lift up. Try and turk that low leg. See him reaching back between behind his own hip. He's got he's got Moser in some trouble again. Going a little bow and arrow action, taking the near leg. And he's gonna be holding three back here for 12 nothing lead once uh, he's on the board. Two seconds to go, and that's how we'll end. Moser goes neutral. Catches. Ah, nice to see you there. Still fighting. And Moser on top again. He yeah, didn't have success turning him before. Mancini got to his feet. 12-2 lead for Dan Mancini here. He's up to one. Moser's getting high. And potentially dangerous. Smart move by Moser. Sink that leg in.
minute 30 left. 10 point lead here for Dan Mancini. He sits out, gets to his changeover. He's going to look to come up. Moser trying to look like bar near side. Mancini turns, faces in right in on his, on his leg. He's going to get a reversal there as he lifts that, gets, lifts that ankle up. He's got to pop his head out to that far hip. There he goes. Yep. Might have that low leg trapped. And he does. He's up 12 with 50 seconds to go. Another set of back gives him a tech ball and a, you know, what could be a precious bonus point. Still semi-early part of the match here. 40 seconds to go. Mancini trying to... Those are not having it. Nope. Young Buck, he's not going to quit on you. Nice double attempt here got. by Mancini. Moser tries to throw. 16 threes at a 13 point lead. Needs a quick two here. See if he can reach his bag of tricks, get a little tilt or something going. Not quite Seven, enough. 17 three. Good job by Mancini, controlled yep. the whole match. Makes it 20 to 6 in favor of the Wildcats. We go to 160 pounds here. We got Ricky McCutcheon and Michael Blakemore. Last match, these two did not meet. Uh, McCutcheon decision Moser eight to six. Uh, Blakemore beat Jason Zollers ten to five last time. Blakemore wrestled seventy. McCutcheon wrestled fifty-two. They're meeting at the middle, meeting at one sixty this week. Wondering if we will see a potential Resnick Marion matchup next. I'm excited to see him. A match I know we'll see is Ellis <coughs> Acosta. I'm excited to see that rematch. Very tight last time. Blake Moore Jr. with 21 and 3 record. Wrestled 60 and 70 this year. Lifetime record of 42 and 20. Been a solid contributor for the Warriors over the past couple years. Ricky McCutcheon is a sophomore, 6-14 record. Big one over Moser on Wednesday. Yes. With Resnick and Mancini there, uh, McCutcheon's asked to wrestle a lot of good wrestlers, wrestlers when they move the lineup around. Cutchin head low on a not so good shot attempt. Blakemore though, you know, not, not the counters we're accustomed to seeing out front there from a, a you know McDacken wrestler. We Mark Marino stalemates it with 28 seconds to go here in the period. Fifteen to go. A little shrug, slide by attempt there by Blakemore, but doesn't do anything with it. Unable to do anything with it. Five seconds to go. Attack and choice, and they go down. Get the mat return going. Blake went to his feet and escapes eight seconds into the period. Give himself a one nothing lead here in the second period.
McCutcheon. Ah, nice sweep single. Lakemore doing a good job of countering. He's got to table that if he wants to have an opportunity to score with it. See, he's picking up on that toe and heel. Trying to put it across his high leg, and Marino still makes it on the edge of the mat. Coach Brown over there giving solid advice as he always does. That crafty little man over there. Shot at him by Blakemore. Countered by McCutcheon. He's down in the front head. Let's see if he's able to uh, apply some pressure and score out his position. He locks up all in one. Let's see if he's going to where he's going to go with it. 25 seconds to go. Marino calls stalemate again. Can't say I disagree. Try it. Level change attempt by McCutcheon. Stopped by Blakemore. Blakemore trying to spin behind. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. There is two with under five to go. He gives it up. That's unfortunate. Three one lead. McCutcheon choice. He goes down. Three nothing lead. I'm sorry. McCutcheon's going to have to dig deep here. Uh, this match is far from over. We saw McCutcheon dig deep on Wednesday night. It's there. He's got to tap back into it again. Caution on top, man. Blakemore trying to get a head start on the breakdown. See if he's going to punch that bar punched in. He's got bar he's riding parallel with it, but he's got him in control. He's got bar on the wrist. Cutch doing a good job doing some hand fighting there to keep him from getting turned. Still is that bar in. Under meant to go here in the mat, remain in the match. Like we're still riding that bar. He's not really trying to improve his position. The cutchin is working, but I don't know if Mark Marino will see it that same way. Now he's come inside leg, he's at the arm trap, Steve is going to Reach underneath, try and go so to hand to tilt. Touch the guy's hands free, he's trying to work up. Stalling on top, man, good call. He gave Blakemore plenty of time to let off those, those legs, but he was continuing to pinch them with his uh, with his knees, keeping the touch from getting up. Seconds go here in the match. Griffith lead. Changeover switch attempt by McCutcheon. Blakemore traps that far ankle pretty quick. Solid job here by Blakemore controlling yep, very McCutcheon like the entire match. Yep. Uh, I like this Blakemore kid. Uh, nice win for him. Getting points for his squad. Good luck to Michael Blakemore the rest of the way here in the postseason. Definitely, and I want to give Michael Blakemore a thank you, too. He was giving, giving us updates to the Rock South uh, Methacton match last night as we were doing the other match. I really appreciate that. Not sure we have here for Methacton, but we have Ryan Resnick for the Benair. Wildcats. We have one of the Benaric brothers. There's two of them, Jake and Colin. 20 to 9 is the score here after that match.
Resnick with another takedown, make it 4-1. Jake Benaric. And Resnick has a cradle, he's got Benaric in a lot of trouble. A lot of fighting Benaric though, but I think he's eventually gonna get, get caught now. He's trapped that drive leg. Oh, he broke the lock, good for him. And <laughs> Resnick's like, you're going back to your back though. Brian Rez is just way too much for, for uh, Ben Eric, who's just a sophomore. 0 and 3 in the season. 7 0 quick here, a minute into the match in favor of Ryan Resnick. He's out the side, he's got two bars locked up. He's got Ben Eric in lots of trouble right now. He's got to get his hips to the mat. There, now he's just starting to pry him back. Again, Ryan's a veteran here. Benaric's got his hands full. Ryan is just relentless on top right now. Goes right from that bar, right to a cross face cradle. 25 seconds to go. I think Ryan was hoping to see Marion possibly. Yes. And now just trying to get six for his squad. 10 to go here, 9 nothing or 9-1, I apologize. Got one swipe. Nine two. Strategically, Owen J. Coaches wanted Resnick to cut him so that his lead was not as large. It went from an eight point lead to a seven point lead. So he has more opportunity because there's a lot of fight in this Veneric young man that, uh, you know, kind of frustrated Resin. Again, that's tough. crafty B Coach Brown over there, right? Yeah. That's an important point there. It's like, it's like you always say, he's smarter than he looks. Oh, yeah. He, well, he don't look smart. <laughs> that's for sure. But you had other people over there shouting, why, we, why, why? Well... You know, he's, we, the Cats won six. You know, it gives him more of an opportunity to try and get the pin. He's coming working on, working on that cross-face cradle. The map to match is locked up at this point, and he's taking him up over the top. It's going to go three-quarter Nelson. Resnick trying everything to get the turn here. I think he needs to go bar and just work it. How about a half? How about a half and a wrist? That still works. Trying to go tilt. 30 seconds go here in the period. Hey, good fight by Miss Acton here. Yep. a point in the third in the second period I would have called you a bold faced liar. Yeah. But that did a nice job there. Snap down spin behind. We're going a little catch and release here. Gotta try and catch him. Take down pin. And Eric belly down there nice. Uh, great pass off to the low single. You can tell Ben Eric's just in damage control mode. Yep. 13-3. A little bit of blood. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank Potsgrove again for hosting this. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Chuck and Mike will agree that they put on a pretty good hospitality room, too. They do a nice job here. Yep. 
Big thanks to the community from what I talked to. Vice Principal Todd Van Horn here at the, uh, the high school told me that the community really stepped up and helped to make this event happen between volunteers and donations. Really nice to see the community opens its doors and, uh, you know, really works to make stuff, something like this happen for the Resnick, local high school. Resnick sets a neutral. We've got 13 three. 15-3. 15-3, sorry. Now he's got Panarik in a lot of trouble. He's feet to back on this one, but Panarik, i am tell you what, he's unbelievable flexibility. Panarik had no parts to getting pinned today. Nope. 110 left in the match. And that is your tech ball. 19-3 is your score. 25-9 in favor of the Wildcats. We go to 182 pounds. Coach Maida congratulates his wrestler for fighting. Knew we had an uphill battle there and a challenge. But Eric, nice job by saving some points for his squad. We got 25 to 9 now. The Cats are ahead. Yeah. Zowers versus Marion here. This is a rematch from the other night. It was uh, like something like 10 5, Marion won. They wrestle. Nope, sorry, I was wrong. Blakemore yeah, beat Zollers last week 10 to 5. Yeah, no. These two did not meet. Marion's early shot. I lost my train of thought, Chuck. I had John Cooley, coach from Boyertown, texting me. Focus. I am. I'm, I'm razor sharp now. Just testing you. Yeah, he was. Try to get me off my game. Marion, a senior. 23 and 4 record this year. Has wrestled 70, 82, and 95. He's a crafty veteran. He's got a 73 and 36 lifetime record. Regional qualifier. Looking to go a little further this year, I believe. Zollers for the Cats as a junior. On bottom right now, can't really do much. Marion's been controlling it. Zollers has a 13 and 9 record. Again, he's wrestled 70, 82, and 95 for the Cats during the season. Zollers has a lifetime 25 and 29 record. 30 seconds to go here today. in the first period. Still two nothing for Marion. Marion riding tough on top here. Zollers not giving him much. Marion trying to come over top. He's got Zollers in trouble now. He's gonna get some swipes. Caught him. Yep, he's caught him. Zollers is fighting now. 15 seconds to go. Nice shot by Zollers now off his back. Marion solid. He's a strong kid. Good first period there by Marion. 5 0 lead over Zollers. Marion defers. Zoller takes neutral. Got the two double A matches are over already. Got the other triple A Conci happening behind us. Five nothing lean here for Marion. Got some hand fighting going on here at the edge of the mat. I know we joked about the size of the mats, and I'm not going back to it, Chuck. But when the bigger guys get out here, we talked a little about it yesterday. A couple steps, you tying up, and, and they're out of bounds already. A lot of stop and start. You know, we made the jokes about it. Just unfortunate that they're wrestling these um, these most important matches here. Yeah. Deciding who's going to states on on the smaller mats. Like you know, I, sure. I get it. He like said it's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, dynamic situation. You don't know. We need another school to step up. It's got a bigger gym. Nobody might have offered. Pottsgrove's doing a nice job with what they got here. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. It's no fault to Pottsgrove. Uh, 
they got a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful facility yeah. here. Um, just a little small for for regular size mat. And uh, the little guys, you're right, you don't quite don't see it as much. Once you get the 160, these bigger guys, two steps and they're out. You know. Zoller's doing a great job, Mary. Mary had a great shot set up to get those legs. Zoller's getting a steady dose of hips right now. Mary and like, strength might come out on top here. 37 seconds going in, in the period. Zoller's doing a great job keeping that heel to her butt. And Marino calls a stalemate. Nice job by Zoller's fighting. So you know, he's a again. kid that's got a lot of fight in him. I think Marion's bleeding on his forehead. Dollars a shot attempt. Four point nine seconds to go here in the second period. Five nothing lead for Marion. Marion takes down. Zollers puts him up. Makes it six nothing. Low single attempt by Marion. Zollers did a great job getting the hips back into the party to fight it off. Three, two, three, two, three. Ah, good job pounding hips. Nice shot breaking Marion off his base. Let's see where he goes from here. Spinning behind, trying to spin behind Marion, catching the legs by the fingertips. Good job by Zollers in the counter, makes it 6-2. A lot of time left. Zollers got to do something to turn him now. on Mary was we got 42 seconds to go here in the period. Mary hadn't lifted his half the mat in quite some time. Now he's up to his knees. He's fighting here. He's always trying to suck him down. Mary's turning in. There it is. 7-2 lead. He's always going to get another takedown here before the period's over. Before the match over for that matter. Good hard fought match there by Zollers. Doing what he can for his teammates and the Cats. Excellent job by Marion. Good match by Marion. Good luck to both of those gentlemen the rest of the way. Yep, Marion flexing his muscle, no pun intended. Is, uh, why he's 20, now 24 and 4 on the season. We have the Griffin Gerber Slob McNair rematch. Salam McNair beat Gerber last week, 8-2. A 25-12 lead for the Cats. Shot attempt by McNair. But, no space.
Got a hot battle going on behind us. Yep. The other on the high semifinal. crotch. Got pulled out front, does so. Gerber trying to counter. McNair just too strong, just throws him to the mat. McNair and the senior. Gives him a two nothing lead. A little bit more muscle there than Gerber. Slaw McNair is a 17 12 record this He's year. Now getting some swipes. He's holding two. He lets go of the hold, and there it makes a 4 nothing lead with 30 seconds to go in the period. McNair's got Gerber a little bit outmatched here. McNair's got a lifetime record of 29 and 30. Gerber, also a senior, 5 and 13 record this year. Wrestled everywhere from 170 to 195. Five seconds go here in the period, and McNair will roll into that period with a 4 0 lead over Griffin Gerber. Okay, you've seen all the different options that the Cats have being able to bump guys around. Um, I think most of the matchups have, have went the way that the Cats have wanted them today. It's going to be another tight one, though. trying to hit the tilt here. He's got a lot cinched up. He just doesn't have to. Oh, McNair doing a nice job stepping over. Nothing yet, nothing yet. McNair gets the escape, makes it 5-0. Nice high crotch here by McNair. We'll see if he's able to finish. Gerber doing a good job fending him off for now. McNair pulling it in to see what he's going to do. He's got to step up, cut the corner. Gerber doing a nice shot at the crotch off, lifting up, but he pulls him onto his own hips. McNair's got Keith circling to his right. Got to get that arm out. Up his back. Can't do it. Gerber's fighting. Good job by Gerber. He's got to break that grip of McNair. Got pressure to head. There's two. 5-2 all of a sudden with 38 seconds to go here in the second period. See if Gerber get a quick turn. He was trying to hit that tilt. A little wildcat roll earlier. Hazard tilt. He cuts him with 23 to go and make it 6-2. Eight seconds to go here in the period, and it looks like it will end in a 6-2, going in, end here 6-2, going in the third. Third period, minute 35 left, and uh, you know, some more hand fighting. See if Gerber can get to the legs. Elbow pass attempt there. McNair shoot, steps out of it. That giant of a figure you see standing behind Coach Duraflo is the old coach Howie Sage. Was the Shadow O&J coach man. for a long time. Uh, he was actually my coach. Loved the guy. Coached me in ninth grade football. Made me go out for wrestling. Told me that story once, Chuck. He I, said, uh, I owe a lot that, that uh, I accomplished in in my high school career in all aspects uh, to him. He was, he was a guy that I really looked up to and really mentored me. Uh, really good guy. Really cares about kids. Cares about the sport of wrestling. Uh, it's good to see him still uh, getting out here and being a part of it. There in the shot. Not his best effort, but he's able to get away without Gerber countering it. 40 seconds to go. Still anyone's match, although 
Gerber's going to do a little bit more. There's a shot attempt. See if he, he switched off to a dump here. Loses the elbow. Oh. An ill-advised headlock attempt there by McNair. Now it's gone from again to take catch and release. He's got to get... Go big. He's got reaching that bag of tricks of his. Trying to hit something. You know, it's frustrating as a coach, Chuck, when you have a kid that's down and they, you know, for over 30 seconds don't try anything to improve their score to get themselves back in the match. Sure. So we go to 220. You got Nick Duliakis ranked number one at 195 in our region in a rematch with Joe Donahue. Chuck, how'd that play out for the Wildcats and Warriors on Wednesday? Uh, Duliakis tech fold him in the middle of the second period, 15 to nothing. You know what I saw yesterday? Week. I saw Duliakis pin a kid yesterday. I don't say that too often. He likes to work the tilts. He does. What not? He likes to put points on the board. Duliakis is a senior. 13 and 5 record this year. There he's on the low single, covers the second leg, gets the takedown. Donahue also a senior for the Warriors, 12 and 15 record this year so far coming into today. Donahue was a district qualifier last year, has a lifetime record of 28 and 34. He's wrestled 220 in heavyweight for his squad this year. He's at the bar in right now. He's going bar wrist. He's going bar claw for a second. I'm not sure whether he's going to try and pull him over for a tilt or not. Minutes to go here in the period. Now he's going to circle around at that bar. You need something else there. Duliakis, lifetime record of 62 and 36. Regional qualifier last year. Mostly wrestled 195, a little bit of 220 if they move the lineup around. Run that bar now. Donnie is scooting his way towards the edge of the mat. 23 to go. Here's the tilt. He try to work some other stuff, but goes back to what is going to you know, put some points on the board for him. Pulling two back with under 10 to go here in the first period. Tuliak has had a nice season on the, the football field, was an all league D lineman for the Cats. To that hazard tilt. Got a full set right now. Uh, let that go, and there is going to be seven nothing. A minute thirty-three left in the second period. Coach Jabrilla working the clipboard over there. Trying to do a little figuring, seeing what's going to happen here with these lighter weights coming up. Everyone's got to do their part. Great job, you run that. And there is the fall. That was quick. 31 15 is now the lead for the Wildcats. 
Big extra points there for Dooley yep. and the Cats. They stretched out the 16-point lead now. Going into heavyweight, we'll get a rematch of last week. My man from a fact, Tony Ellis, versus Mr. Acosta from the Cats. The Warriors need bonus points in all three matches here, Chuck. Yeah, Ellis beat uh, Acosta last time, three to two. They need, they need pins in the next three matches to uh, to win, or two pins in a Tech ball to win, or two pins in a major to tie. Nice snatch single by Ellis. Tell you what, he hits that night. It's a devastating move for heavyweights. You get good at it. Just clear hands real quick, get to that high thigh. These big guys have been known to throw a big move or two, so maybe Ellis can catch them. Try and get some extra points for the Warriors. See if they can uh, shorten up this gap. Again, it was changing on right to his feet. Ellis got to try to slip a bar in. Back to his feet as a cost, and it's like that. It's 2-1 with a minute 18 left in the first period. If I had a venture, a guess here, Chuck, I'm going to say that Owen Jay is going to send a JV guy out at 106 against Morbido and put the more experienced Forrest out against... Uh, Donovan at 113. See the cat's got a couple little guys warming up over there. I like this Ellis kid, promising sophomore. 22 and 7 record so far this year. 32 and 17 lifetime record. We'll see these two wrestle again at the Pac-10 match in a couple weeks. Two weeks away, Chuck. Yeah, postseason's here. Part of the most wonderful time of the year. My wife doesn't think so, but I do. A lot of hand fighting, a lot of heavy ties going on. Five seconds go here in the first period. 2-1 lead for Methacton. Methacton's Tony Ellis. It's like Christmas every day for me. Football, wrestling, baseball never stops. Every day I wake up, you know? Christmas every day. Reminded me of the cross start soon. <laughs> nice job by Alex for turning him down. Really down. And he's running some power half, but he's not in a real great position for it. Now he's going to spiral here, and he's going to cut Ellis with a minute 44 left in the period. Last time they met, Acosta was trying to, to force the headlock. Couldn't quite happen. Ellis wrestled very smart last week, wrestling pretty good right now. Winding down the midway point of this match, and it is oh, Acosta on a high single of his own. Now he's coming up for body. Nice back trip. Great job by Acosta to get two at the edge of the mat. 55 seconds to go. Good flurry there by the big boys. Very nice job by him sticking with it. There, nice job. Three to three now. 55 seconds to go. Time you hear a coach Sage talk is when the heavies wrestle. There he is. likes the big boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's his forte. Ooh. There we go, tied at 4 uh, 3 in favor of Ellis. With 35 to go here in the second. Ellis got to be careful, he's getting a little lackadaisical. Got to stay in good position. Got to 
got five seconds to go here in the period. I think we'll go in. Ooh, spoke too soon. <laughs> Flurry there at the end. We'll go there. Costa's choice is going to go down. Costa to his feet. And cut hands. See how long Ellis tries to return the mat, and he doesn't wait long cutting him. Costa's got to put the pressure on now. Ellis is, every time Costa's pushed or pressed, he's been standing up. He's giving Acosta an opening for a shot. Let's see if Acosta can take advantage here in the third period. Like right there. See how he stood up, got a little yeah. lazy? Well, that's Acosta's got to see that, and he's got to attack. deadlock between Alex Acosta and Tony Ellis. Nobody willing to really make a move here. Seconds putting the pressure on, Ellis won't get, won't give him a stall, stalling warning here. Fifteen to go, shot attempt by Costa. Ellis with the counter, we go to ten. Ooh, Ellison on that single. Both, Ooh. Great call by Fantasy all over it. Both had feet out of bounds. Right call, we go 8.7 seconds go here in, in the match. However, it looks like we're going overtime. Oh, there's snatch single attempt by Ellis. Two, one, and they're out of bounds with point three to go. That's the opening of the Costa should have hit earlier. We'll put a minute on the, on the scoreboard here and get after it. Overtime with the big boys, four to four. These big guys are pretty nimble for their size. Yep. About 15 seconds here left in the in the overtime period. We won again. Gotta have the going out of bounds. We're being by. harassed. I know. Those Boyer Town coaches, man, they just think they can whatever they want. You're an easy target. They just pick on you. <laughs> Nothing doing in overtime. Still four to four. Stockton gets choice. He goes down. This is where Meredith, one of his four for the Wildcats, where he got tough on top for his 30 seconds. Caution Costa. See if one of these guys can ride the other one out. Neither's been able to hold the other one down, really. And that trend Ellis continues. Explodes. Yep. Ooh, a lot of scary. <laughs> Close for both. Tell you what, 
fights. Close match, but not for lack of trying. Both guys going at each other. Well, they're both working. Costa, his turn to go down. Twice. Right to his feet. Does a nice job getting there. Using back pressure on the way up. And six seconds into the period, this 30 second overtime, he's on his feet. Memory serves me correct. Ellis scored the first point, so he'll have choice in the ride out if it goes there. About nine seconds will figure that out. Costas got his hands full here. Yep. Howie Sade instructed him to pick the ankle, try and keep him down. He did not. Ellis is out for the victory. Yep. Took just eight seconds. Costa not very happy. The match did not go the way he wanted to again. Nice job by the young Ellis. Yep. Got three points for his squad. Again, a sophomore that's got a promise to heavyweight. Here comes Morbido for the Warriors and Jacob Dunleavy, the backup at 106, coming out for the Wildcats. Morbido in on the shot, snatch single. Morbido's got some experience here on Dunleavy. Morbido's got a 21-4 record. Morbido up in the air. Dunleavy, Dunleavy doing a good job di dipping down. Going to try a little funk roll here. Hanging Great on. Great job. Morbido's experience, though, is uh, stifling this right now. Dunleavy's going to fight for you. He's a freshman with a 3-4 and four record. Again, when the Cats bump their lineup around a little bit, he's got some varsity action. Morbido. Side. He's running it. He's trying to. Marino all over. Make sure he's staying in a, in a safe criterion. There's the whistle. Came unsafe for Don Levy, and he whistled it. Morbido putting them on their feet. Morbido on the shot. Nice job. Don trying to hold on. Morbido trips him down to the mat. You know, Dunley doing his part. He's getting kind of thrown to the lines here, but oh, again, Marino over. He's getting, just getting too high, getting too much pressure in that shoulder joint of Dunley. That's why he keeps getting whistled. And Morbido puts him back on their feet here. We're going to little catch and release here with a minute left in the first period. Takedown by Morbido, 6-2 here, 30 seconds to go. Twenty to go. Last time they wrestled, Dunleavy was not in the lineup. Morbido beat David Forrest, who we think we'll see in 13, right? Coming up. By the venture, I guess, yeah. They like, they like their chance of him on the end Donovan. Yep, Morbido beat David Forrest last week, 10 to 1. Cats only two dual losses came to Border Town and Garnet Valley yesterday. And we're out of time. Garnet Valley and Dennington West and a barn burner over here behind us. The Cats might get a second chance to revenge their loss from yesterday against Garnet Valley later today. I forgot to point out with Ellis winning in overtime, it sealed the uh, did seal the win. 
for the Wildcats. They uh, they are going to state duels. It's a matter of when and where. Morbido on the shot. Counter gets a near side cradle locked up. He's got Dunleavy in. Some trouble just like that at 2 minutes and 16 seconds. Morbido gets to pin 31-24 now. Slapping that. We have last match of the evening here, or afternoon. 31-24. David Forrest and Liam Donovan. Even for Mathacton, wrestled a hell of a match last week. Fought really hard. Lanky kid, not easily swayed. Very hard to do moves on guys that lanky. Donovan's gonna gonna fight here for the Warriors. He is a sophomore and has wrestled mostly 113 this year for his squad. Forrest is a freshman with 11 and 15 record. Has bumped up to 113 here. Cats have this sealed. They're up by seven. Forrest shooting in. Counter again. There's a reshot by Forrest. Nothing. Minute 25 left here in the first period. There's a nice duck under attempt to a shot. He steps around. Uh, Liam Donovan doing a nice job countering. Forrest come back up. See if he's going to cut to a double. And okay. That works too. Of course, run his half wrist real tight. Gives him a little rag there. Got a little blood here. Got a blood here. Donovan is bleeding. We've got another tight match here. Uh, last week, the, the flip in the matchups went the Thacton's way, and they held it closer longer. The early hey, had the flip and started where here? they wanted. They built a lead that the, the Warriors just could not come back, climb back, quite climb back into it. Man, some funny looking cats over here. Petro, get out of the screen. You're scaring people. There appears to be a 80-year-old four. And helping clean the mat right now. He spends most of his day posting on the forum. Yeah, he doesn't do much, really, to be honest with you. Claims he works, but I don't know what job he has. Like, what does he do? I think he's just an internet rat. He just rats around on the internet all day. Trolling people. Yeah. Most recent crusade is the changing back of the fuel weight classes. An 80 year old internet troll. He ain't pinning to win nothing. So, this guy. He's really good at cleaning mats, though. That, I mean, he should be a professional mat cleaner. Right? Here on the restart here at the end of the, uh, midway through the first period. Forced back to that half and wrist. Try to roll through. Nice job. He might have it. He's got the arm caught, but again, we saw this. This is the third time we've seen Donovan. He's scrappy. I mean, his record doesn't indicate it. Got it's that hard pretty to turn. Deep. Got a bar and a half here. Again, he's like, he's hard to turn. Twenty-two seconds to go here. Four still riding at half. So try and turn him. Still nothing, nothing. Two nothing is the lead here as we roll into the second period. Good fight Four by shows. Donovan. He defers. Donovan goes neutral. There is Force in a double leg takedown. Takes it over the head and circles around. He's got far arm. Nope, he's at the leg. Turks, but he's losing the Turk. Donovan as Donovan cross forward. Okay. 
Force back to the half. the run at half as we hit the midpoint of the match. We're still going tight waist half. Nothing yet. Nothing. He tries to hit that roll up over again. And he's got half in a spiral. Or I'm sorry, half still tight waist. Now he goes spiral. Getting some, you know, moving a little bit. 20 seconds to go here in the period. Still has a 4 nothing lead. And three. There is the way we'll end the second period. Force with the. 4 nothing lead. Tim Forrest controlling. Not really being able to do much to the length of Donovan. Shot here, head inside double. Donovan doing a good job countering. Minute 16 left. He tries to come up over top. Force says nope. Throws him up and. Force called him 6 0 now. Minute left here in the match. Six nothing lead for David Forrest. He's in control. Has been from the start. Just can't seem to turn him. Now he's running that half deep. seconds to go here in the last match the duel looks like Dave Force will win it crowd Zaff with the big pin at 106 over the younger Politi brothers locking hands here with one second to go makes it 6-1 that might have just locked it in for downtown west with the way the crowd's going nuts can't see the score behind us we had a good quality match here to watch today nice job by the cat Good there fight by Mathacton. It's going to be 34-24 victory for the Wildcats. Two times in a week knocked them off. Extend the lead this time with all the uh, with winning the toss and matches going their way. You know, again, these are two teams that would represent district very well at the state level. It's unfortunate they had to wrestle in the constant semis. But with that said, we're going to get going here. we got to break down and move so we can get to the match for the finals later this afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Joe Youngblood. And Chuck Nestle. And Mike Leister. Take care.